Hey y'all, it's Betsy and Mom from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden project. And so technically, it is a tour. Biddy, don't eat that. Betty, come here. She's eating a day lily. Look at her eye, girl. Can't flip her. She's too cute. Come on. Flip her. Thank you, Good baby. job. You can eat a weed. Okay. Crisis averted. We are filming the June garden tour for Mom's Garden today. So a lot of things are still looking really pretty. A lot of her plants are really growing together, which is nice. And uh, she's got lots of foxgloves and glads and her lantana. Her uh, petunias are still huge. Mom's garden is only about 10 minutes away from my house. Yeah. But the, the weather and how things grow is still very different. So yeah. go figure. But we're gonna go ahead and start over by the arbor and the shade garden and work our way around. And we'll see how long it takes. We may make it over to the new driveway garden uh, or we may stop at the old oak tree garden. We'll find out. Okay. We'll probably do both. All right, ready to roll? You gonna get the weed dog? Yeah. Come on, doggy. Come on, Betty. Go. Let's go. All right, so straight on the arbor, you can see we're still working on the bricks. Hopefully we'll get that done by the end of summer, but the pagan, pagan, the Peggy Martin Rose is almost halfway over. It's getting up to the top to the point where it really needs some more ties. But it's doing really well. That's one season of growth. We planted it last autumn. And the Vitex. Doing great. Lots of bumblebees. Lots of bees. They love this. This is the lilac of the south. And the bees love it. They are all over it. This is also one season of growth. These can get huge here. Up to 20 feet if they really like their spot. So liking it so far. And then over here, we've got a butterfly bush, some glads coming up, comb flowers, a super tunia vista. Well, this was here from last year. That one came back. But this one I planted, it's, it's kind of not liking it. No, it may be. Is it getting enough water or something? I don't know. It's definitely got water going through it. And a knockout rose. So. One of the ones that came from your house, that was the one that was struggling the most. Yeah. They all came from my house. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and then the hookra is just about out of bloom. It's only got a few little stalks of blooms left, but it was very pretty all spring and it will still have really pretty color the rest of the season. And you can see that the one fern, the cars are crazy. Are, are popping up kind of everywhere. And I think you're just going to let them kind of mm -hmm. naturalize back there. Yep. Then the daylilies. They're doing great. I need to dead head. Yes. A bunch of stuff. And so mom, we did a whole video. She ordered a bunch of plants in the mail. And you can <laughs> see she planted these. They were, they were bare, bare root. root. We did a whole video on planting them. And they are already starting to grow and put up buds. So they're about grown about two, three inches. Yeah, they've grown a lot since she planted them. So yeah. next year they might be this big, but they're still doing really well for the yeah, first yeah. year. Yeah, I'm very happy. And apparently they are attractive to Yorkies. Yes, Betty decided yum yum. She said, "I was just trying to help you, Deadhead Grandma." That's it. Come on, you deadheading. Good stuff, Betty. Betty, Betty, gumdrop. More naturalizing of the ferns back here. We've got more daylilies, another one of the knockout roses. And then all of this, this petunia, this is one petunia from last year. And the gumfrina all came back from last year. Her Veronica came back. And then back here, she's got some, uh, what are those? Black-eyed Susans. And some milkweed. Yep. You can see the dogwood and the hydrangea. That's an oak leaf hydrangea. Everything's doing well. Gardenia. 
Yeah, Psych Gardenia is not doing as well, but it's no, not bad. But it's not dead. Mainly, it's really hard to keep all of this weeds back, back in here. So, yeah. the more plants that grow up and suppress the weeds will be better, but, you know, got some lupins that we grew from seed that are still growing but you can see they've got leaves so yep. maybe next year they'll be more established mm -hmm. some pretty more cone flowers and oh, I have one stalk that fell down. little hydrangea oh, no. mom's glads she's still You're trying. she's still learning about glads and we've That's still got food. yeah Still got lots more to plant. She's got a whole other half of the package. Another get them out there. 75 count of them. But they're very pretty. I did put those vinca in there. I know, they're pretty. Plant. Hopefully they'll uh, in my antique grow, grow, grow. Cedar in there. And more bricks more free to bricks. work on. And then we go around. You can see the playhouse. So mom bought a playhouse. That's going to be a whole project. <laughs> But this side of the garden is still a work in progress right here. Yeah. So still we've got her agapanthus though. So this is the one just like mine, the ever twilight that blooms year round. Well, not year round. It doesn't bloom in the winter, but it blooms all spring, summer. summer, all the way to first frost. And you can see it's very pretty and it's already putting up a second bloom, which mine hasn't done that yet. Oh, wow. So that's fun. And uh, she filled her little cart with flowers. I think she's gonna put some cocoa liner yeah. in it so that you don't see the ready fill buckets. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they're a very pretty mix of flowers with the pinks and the yellows and the verbena. So, and they should all spill over and down eventually. From there, we've got the zinnias, which finally, we grew all these direct seeded, and, and they are just start getting starting on blooming. So these are a lime green color, and I cannot wait to see what they look like, because we've never grown these before. But they're doing well. They Buds on probably could have been thinned, but we just didn't. No. We thought the lime green under the Japanese maple would be pretty. Eventually this guy will grow up into a big tree, but he's still pretty as a little tree. Some more glads. Peonies are doing well, even if they're little. And her one lupin that is giant, she grew that from seed. And by we, I mean me, but mine are still tiny. Yes, and are. mom's is like mom's is it. taking off. Hopefully it'll bloom this year, but I don't know. A lot of times things from seed will not bloom the first year. Your petunias are struggling. Yeah. Your snowdrift. Yeah. Do you know why? Um, I don't know. I'm going to um, gonna have to figure it out. I decided I'm going to water a little bit more frequently. It's been very hot the last couple yeah. days, and we it's think really that's really been a problem. And she just planted these, so they're not yeah. rooted in yet. Well, that thing has a problem with the drainage. The drainage. So I think I'm gonna, I, I put some cans in the bottom, but I think we're going to have to drill a hole. Yeah. They don't like sitting in water any more than anything else. Yeah. So that's the problem. And then this is probably your smallest lantana. Yeah, it is. Got the April night salvia, lantana, petunias, puppy cage. Yes, the puppies are going to come out in a little bit. Yes. Daisies. The Gara is out of bloom, so you probably need to cut it back so it'll bloom again. Yeah, I'd probably do that. Yeah. I gotta go out and cut a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Some of these daisies have to be cut down. And you could see a black eyed Susan they that is start blooming, to starting to open. They get tall, don't they? They get a little taller than that, yeah. Like a not foot as, taller than that? Not or? as tall as this Gara, but. Like taller. 20 inches or like 30 inches? Probably 24. 24 inches. 24 inches. Yeah. Okay. And then this side of the garden was struggling, so you'll see over there. Doing so much but better. they're doing so much better. 
They are starting to bloom. They are all green and coming back. And, and the alyssum's coming back. So I think we we finally got the aphids under control so that they can live. Yeah, they're doing better. And that is my old um, bird, bath. bird bath that my grandmother gave me that got broken when we moved. So I had to repair it and I'm gonna paint it. She just fixed it with some concrete repair last week. Mm -hmm from Quickcrete, so yes. now we will uh, paint it or plant in it or something, but it's, even with just the concrete concrete repair, it's holding water, it's which holding water. Surprised. we were surprised, but that stuff was good. I didn't want to throw it away, though, since, you know, it's one of the first things my grandmother ever gave me for my garden. Yeah, so, sometimes things are just too sentimental. Yeah, she gave me that when we lived in Texas in the early, mm -hmm. early night. I was a little girl then, yeah. so... All right, second half of the garden. I also want to point out that she added a lot more garden tchotchkes, like these hose link, um, they're hose guides, so that things don't get in the garden as much. She has turtles and birds and frogs. <laughs> they're super cute. But she just went out to the barn and pulled out a bunch of garden stuff that uh, she hasn't used for a while. Uh, you can see the other gardenias that are doing better. Yeah, those the are. queen of the lantana. That one is huge. This one is bigger than the hydrangea. Yeah, it is. So. These, and there's another one behind it. Yeah, these daylilies are doing much better than the ones on the other side. But they did not get attacked. They did not get attacked by the aphids. So you can see the difference. And then the tiny bare root ones that she just planted. They are. Just they're fun. doing great. And eventually they will grow up and be like adult uh, daylilies. So this hydrangea, and you can see we did put some soil acidifier to make them blue, but not until a little later in the season. If we had done it first thing in the season, the whole thing would be blue. But oh, since yeah. we did it halfway, we have the first round of blooms, which are pink, and the second round, which are blue. Which I kind of like, but mom wants them to be all blue. Black eyed Susans, Black -eyed Susans are coming back here too. Lantana, pincushion flowers, the mums are blooming. Yep. Butterfly bush, butterfly bush. It's a very pretty mix. You can see the uh, planter we planted up. The daisies are starting to push new buds, so that's nice. And then we think something's eating these glads because they yeah. kind of keep pulling things in. Like, you know those, those cartoons where there's a pretty flower like mom and then all of a sudden it just goes whoosh and there's like a gopher. I think you've had moles, not voles, moles in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Maybe the moles are back. I don't know. Maybe sure. it's something else, but we, we've definitely seen them. So who knows? And then this is the old oak tree garden bed. It is now the loquat garden bed. Yes, loquat. But look at all the foxgloves. Like they are struggling in the heat, but they are doing really well. Successful milk jug planting. Mine are all just starting to shoot up bloom stalks uh, compared to mom's. Great. Yeah, so, and her, this is the whirlwind white gara. It looks like little butterflies. This rose is her happiest of all the roses. You can see all the glads, some zinnias that we self-seeded, cone flowers, dogwood tree, bee balm is, is still growing, but it hasn't started blooming yet. All of this gumfrina and this massive queen supertunia. This is one plant, all came back. This is one plant. That's two. Over there is one plant. And the salvia is drooping. Yeah, it's so hot. It's so hot. But I mean, I when I planted my salvia, it was drooping like this. I cut it back by a third, gave it extra water, and now it's three times that size. Okay. So, you know, it'll be fine. Things just have to root in. Yeah. So, let's come down here and show you from the street. The, but look... Yeah. The Vitex. Oh, yeah. So mom's been digging in this path. 
This is from her tree that fell in the backyard. A limb that fell. Just a limb, not a tree. Not the tree. It and so my house, but it's, you know. she's put in this little stepping stone path through the garden, which once the crepe myrtle gets taller and you can walk under it will be very nice. But for now, yep. you kind of walk on it and then have to veer around. But we're stooping and we get through. It's still nicer than not having a path. Now this Vitex is a little older than the other one. It's like a year and a half, yeah. two years old, as opposed to one year. year and, a half. and you can see it's the growth is almost the same, but this one has so many more buds. Oh no, this one's taller. It's taller, but it's almost the same. It's not, it's not ridiculously taller. But I do want to limit up once it's about blooming. Yes, so that, uh, so that the mums have room. She wants this one to be more of a tree. tree. And then we've got more, more zinnias. zinnias that we self-seeded. Yes, I did all of that. I don't know. But they are all starting to bloom. Mine are all starting to bloom. Your catmint is blooming more, so that's nice. Yeah, my catmint loves it here. You've got a weed there. I have a big old weed. This is huge. Oh, you want to see a big old weed? Watch my garden tour from this month. <laughs> I pulled one out from right in my hydrangea that was over knee height. Oh my God. <laughs> Not even joking. Like it was bigger than a foxglove. So, oh, is that a weed or is that just the biggest know. petunia leaf you've ever seen? I think that's a weed. <laughs> Either way, I want to show y'all the foxgloves right now because they are so pretty. And I love, so this is the Camelot mix, which means that they bloom the first year. So these are first year plants. We seeded them in January and uh, they are doing fabulous. And they will come back next year and be bigger next year. So there you go. All right, you're gonna see. Just a petunia leaf. Underneath the petunia, and it is gonna come out. Ha ha! Success. success. Oh yeah! Look at this weed. Oh yeah, that's that crazy. This vine. crazy vine. It, it comes. We should just do a weed tour one day because oh my gosh, these things are we could. We literally will weed every day, and it makes no difference. Oh, There's yeah. one right there I too. Know. I gotta get it. And then these glads are starting to be spent. The azalea is done. Come on, bitty bitty. And then we've got catmint, Veronica. We planted these in mom's 75% off haul. Vinca, the cosmos. Oh, look at that butterfly. Oh, he moved. There he is. Oh, that's a moth, I think. Oh, yeah. He's pretty. There's a lot of moths. Yeah, we get a lot of moths here. They're still pollinators. Glads, you can see the foxglove through there. More uh, tiny. Can't think of the word. I've said it eight million times. Daylilies. <laughs> this one, Veronica, is struggling. So of all, all the things on the 75% off rack, they may not make it, but... That's pretty good. Everyone loved your 75% off dance, Mom. She has lots of fun dances. And you can see these were self-seeded zinnias. Well, I, I seeded them, but yeah. And they are, they are blooming. Here's another frog. Hose, hose guy. <laughs> and then the most important part of the tour the barking dogs, butterfly bush, and the dahlias from the 75% off. We planted these uh, containers on video. They are doing fabulous. Yeah, this one is doing really well because it's a little more shade. That one, yeah. I had to put another little emitter on it. He needs more water. Yeah, I put another one. And let's go across the way to the new garden bed. This is almost all 75% off plants and look how well they're doing. 
They are all starting to bloom. The verbena, the gara. So your salvia back there needs to be cut and watered as well. But you know. I need to go around and cut a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And then she got this new bird cage, which she just put there for now and put some ferns in it. I think you were thinking about spray painting it. About paint white, but I don't know. I kind of like it that color. Kind of like the red. In the garden. It might be pretty behind the oak leaf. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Like coming out of the I'm oak leaf. The, um, white behind it, it. yeah. Okay. So we'll see. It might go in the backyard, but. You want to go in the backyard now? We can do that a different day. Okay. But there you go. That is everything for June. Okay. And I do still need to get some. Uh, some more compost and malt to put on. To finish this up. But we were only planning to put in this Japanese maple for Mother's Day. We were not planning to do a whole garden bed makeover here. But we just started taking out the monkey grass because it had overtaken the bed. Oh, yeah. And then she started putting cardboard down because it suppresses the weeds. And then when we found all the plants at 75% off, that sealed the deal. Well, show them over there, the monkey grass over there. They can see. Yeah. Uh, so a bunch of people have asked, why did we take out the monkey grass? And if it stayed in a border and it had a hard plastic edge to keep it contained, it no, makes right no over. difference. It just, it, you can see it, it completely takes over the whole bed. And you're just pulling out because it grows from rhizomes. And so then you're just pulling it out forever. And if you want a monkey grass border, then planting it and keeping it contained, you might have a good luck. But m when mom bought this house 10 years ago, oh, it, was it was already crazy overgrown. Yeah. And then she hasn't done anything to certain areas like over here in 10 years. So it's only gotten worse. Yeah. So it just... It just needed to come out and be started from fresh. One oak leaf hydrangea, and it, it's grown from three little stalks to a huge. And it would be twice as big, but we took big, we big took chunk. a chunk out like this size. And, the other side of and on the other side, we took out two small chunks for my oak leaf that is now almost, almost half this size. Yeah. It's pretty big. We'll probably bring some over there. So we're probably going to move another chunk to Will's house, my brother. And another chunk back by mom's new dog playhouse. Yeah. But it's, I mean, if you have a spot like this where you can just let it take over, it's a great plant. Oh, yeah. If you want it to be contained, mm. I, I don't know that I'd plant one. I'd plant a different kind of hydrangea like the, like the endless summer, the um, summer crush or the twist and, shout. twist and shout or the bloom struck. That's going to stay a certain size and be more manageable. So, all right, mom. Is that it for your whole garden? That's all for the front. For I the have front. A back garden, but that we can said not today. We can do the back garden, but it, we can do it today. But it needs to be another video because this one's getting too long. Okay. So we'll go back and film the back, and then I'll I'll upload it on a different day for y'all. Okay. That make you happy? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye.